In defamation law in Australia, of course, there are a number of defences that a publisher can choose um, and Network 10 and Lisa Wilkinson have chosen two defences. One is truth and the other is qualified privilege, which means they'll attempt to establish that it was reasonable for them to publish what they did based on the effort that they'd made to establish that it was in fact true. So let's talk about the truth defence first. Uh, this is going to be slightly different to the standard of proof in a criminal matter, isn't it? Yeah, so in a criminal matter, you've got uh, that the standard of proof in a criminal matter is beyond reasonable doubt. Uh, you have to convince a judge or a jury um, that it is beyond reasonable doubt that the offence occurred. Um, in a civil matter, the standard of proof is on the balance of probabilities. So it's on the balance of probabilities did this situation occur, right? And so what's um, happening at the moment is that Network 10 are trying to prove that on the balance of probabilities, Bruce Lerman raped Brittany Higgins. So who is Network 10 and Lisa Wilkinson going to call to establish the truth of this allegation? So first up, we've obviously seen uh, Brittany Higgins in the witness box. She's expected to finish up um, her cross-examination on Tuesday this week. Um, we're also going to hear from people like parliamentary staffers, security guards, people who were in the club with Bruce and Brittany that night, uh, Brittany Higgins' parents, uh, people who can speak to uh, the uh, events of the night that the rape allegedly occurred. Now let's talk about qualified privilege. That has a number of meanings in law, but in this case, Case, it means that uh, a publisher has a, a privilege, a qualified privilege, to publish something if it's in the publisher's belief that that material is reasonable, that they've made every effort to establish that it's true, that they've given the uh, person who they're accusing of something or reporting on the opportunity to respond. So that's going to be slightly more tricky, isn't it? Um, who are we going to see called in terms of what the project did to establish whether or not this was true? So that's where we see people like Lisa Wilkinson take the witness box. Uh, people like Lisa Wilkinson, um, the project producer Angus Llewellyn, whose name has been um, thrown around quite a bit. He was the producer who attempted to contact Bruce Lerman prior to the project interview airing. Um, we'll also hear from a range of other journalists speaking to, um, uh, well, Channel 10 journalists speaking to the fact that they think that it was reasonable for them to publish this story. Yeah, Network 10 claims that it did attempt to contact Lemon on a number of occasions. He doesn't agree. Where does that tension lie? Yeah, so we've already seen um, uh, quite a bit of this d discussion around the attempts that Network 10 made to get in contact with Lerman um, when Lerman was on the stand. Um, so he said that he didn't receive any information or any uh, attempts to contact from Network 10 until he was in a mental health facility after the project interview had already been aired. Um, that is not what Network 10 claimed. Network 10 claimed that they attempted to contact Bruce Lerman um, through uh, phone numbers, via email, um, in multiple different ways and on multiple different occasions prior to the project interview going to air. So what we have heard is that they said that they reached out to him on the Friday, um, the interview went to air on the Monday night, um, and they said, gave him you know three days to respond to those requests, whereas he said that he didn't receive any of those requests until 